Today we're going to check out this awesome Honda Rubicon 520 build and go over some of the accessories and modifications thrown at it. Before we dive into all the details behind this ATV, or submarine as some would call it, if you see any parts that you'd like more information on, I'll have links down in the description and some of the discount options may help save you a few bucks too if you're in the market to buy, all while helping support the channel in the process. First up, we'll dive into this rather beefy front bumper that's built by Strongmade. It's from their Winch series line of bumpers and mounts up to the existing front bumper, giving you more protection as well as a place to mount a winch up to without having to tuck it up under the front of the machine where they're normally mounted as it's a pretty tight fit in there. And another bonus is that it's just a lot easier to get to when you need it. You'll definitely have to be a lot more careful though when loading this in the bed of your truck due to it sticking out so much, otherwise you're going to have a bad day. Then we move over to an easy one as it's tied to what we just talked about and that's the Warren VRX 3500 pound winch. And yeah, there's not much to say about this, it's a winch. Are they a must buy? Well, it depends on the type of trails and terrain you ride on, but more importantly, your personality. Some people are more tame and 99% of the time won't get themselves into something that requires a winch. But if you're the type of person that likes to have a little fun and test yourself as well as your machine, a winch is worth its weight in gold. Next up, we've got this snorkel kit for the Rubicon from High Lifter. And if you've been living under a rock and don't know what a snorkel is. In short, it now sucks in air from up here to help protect the engine's intake from sucking in water and mud should you really go ham and take this four-wheeler into places that it wasn't originally designed for. The average person won't need one, but if you're one of those that really likes to push it, they can be cheap insurance at the end of the day. Then we move over to another option from High Lifter, and that's their two-inch lift kit for the Rubicon. Their kit comes zinc plated like this one or powder coated, and they also come with a lifetime warranty too. If you're just wanting a little bit larger wheel and tire package over stock, you won't need this, but if you want to go as aggressive as this Rubicon, your fenders will thank you at the end of the day. And that leads us over to the wheel and tire package on this Rubicon. Yes, it's not as aggressive as the Rubicon we did a video on a little while back with 29 and a half inch tires, but still, she's got a pretty wild setup. Replacing the stock 25 by 8 and 25 by 10 Maxxis tires, you have these six ply ITP cryptid tires in a 28 by 10 on all four corners. These things are pretty much paddle tires, but for the mud with one and a half inch deep lugs that grow up to two inches at the shoulder. They weigh in at 40 pounds a pop though, so keep that in mind when it comes to filling a loss of power in your butt dyno. And one more thing to keep in mind, if you've ran a tire like this, kiss any sort of smooth riding down the trails, goodbye. I can't tell you how many customers I've had over the years that love the look of a tire like this, but absolutely hated it for any sort of normal riding. But there's no denying if you want to play in the mud, aggressive mud tires like this are what you want. And those are wrapped around a set of 14 inch aluminum wheels from Black Rhino, replacing the 12 inch steel setup. These are their La Paz wheels, and I'm pretty sure I'm still butchering that name, but hey, we're getting closer, I think. 15 inch black rhino La Paz wheels, and I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. La Paz. Nope. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! They're finished in OD green with a black lip, and I think the color goes pretty well with the camo, but what do you guys think? I'd like to see these wheels on Honda's new Black Forest Green that's replacing the olive green color for 2023 in their ATV lineup and see just how well they mesh together. But that's enough rambling for me. What do you guys think about this setup on the Rubicon? Is there anything you would have done differently? Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments section and I'll be joining in on the conversation too. Don't forget, if you'd like more info on a certain item, everything is linked below and you can learn more about it all over at hondaprokevin.com too. Thanks for watching and supporting all of this. I really appreciate it guys and we'll see you in the next one, but first,